I've been hitting on almost every buy low candidate I have had this season from guys like Anthony Richardson to Josh Jacobs to Nico Collins to AJ Brown among many other candidates that we've done on this show about buy low candidates in specific guys trading is one of the most important pieces of all of fantasy football and this week there are plenty of guys once again that are great buy low candidates right now so we got to get a jump on week five fantasy football by giving you guys six buy low trade targets before week five fantasy football guys and we are continuing to give away the ffn white hat on this channel so give me your hottest take for week six fantasy football in the comments below to have a chance to win this hat we're giving away five of these this week for 5,000 subscribers that we just hit and i need your help to hit 6,000 subscribers guys so please go down there and drop a like on this video and subscribe to the channel to show your support so let's go ahead and just dive into these list of guys right here this week i've got jalen waddle kicking it off of the miami dolphins right now so here's the thing about jalen waddle it's obviously been a really slow start to the season for him this is not typical jalen waddle and especially when you compare it to last year's start it's not very good he doesn't even have a touchdown yet in this offense in this miami dolphins offense where everybody's scoring yeah jalen waddle doesn't have a single touchdown yet it's been the Tyree Kill show, and then at the running back position, Raheem Mostert, Devon A. Chain, they're all killing it right now as well. The Buffalo beatdown just happened this week. Obviously, they got absolutely crushed by Buffalo. And so Jalen Waddle's coming off yet another bad week. But here's what I want to say about Jalen Waddle specifically. I discussed this with AJ Brown a couple of weeks ago when he was a trade target back after week two. And I said, listen, guys, here's the thing about AJ Brown's week two. On that Thursday night game, A.J. Brown actually scored a touchdown in that game that got called back. So his fantasy output was once again not very good that week. And I said, if he had scored and it had counted, everybody would look at this so much differently. Like, nobody would be looking at this as if, like, A.J. Brown, what if he's not that good? Is he a buy low candidate? Like, I wouldn't have even had the opportunity to call him a buy low candidate that week. And obviously, A.J. Brown has recovered and been great. Well, Jalen Waddle in this game against Buffalo, he had a touchdown get called back too. He had a touchdown that was about 10 to 15 yards worth that got called back in this game. So if the score counts, the narrative on Jalen Waddle this week and the perspective of the fantasy football community on him would be so much better. Everyone would be like, see, there's the Jalen Waddle I know, and that's the guy I drafted. And he's just gonna continue to do more of that. But that's not how it happened this week. This is a very important piece of context with guys like this. We're talking about a guy who's the most explosive on one of the most explosive offenses in the National Football League. We're talking about the wide receiver two, one of the best wide receiver twos in the game on a particular team. This guy, I, I think that is just in the category of guys where before the start of the season, nobody would have thought that you could trade a guy like Adam Thielen, Romeo Dobbs, Hollywood Brown for a guy like Jalen Waddle. I think we're in that right now. And by the way, Jalen Waddle gets an immediate break in the schedule this week against the New York Giants. That's a massive schedule break right here. They're going to rip apart the Giants defense. And I wouldn't be surprised if Jalen Waddle has his first touchdown in that game. So I got lots of confidence in Jalen Waddle. You can see the numbers on the screen. Nothing's great right now, but I'm telling you, if he had scored this past week, it would have been a much different story and he wouldn't be a buy low guy. Number two, I've got Michael Pittman Jr. of the Indianapolis Colts this week. So the, the thing about the Indianapolis Colts and not just Michael Pittman is I've been beating this drum from the start of the season. Indianapolis's offense is really, really good. Way earlier than I thought it was going to be. This offense is super, super good. Anthony Richardson looks like a total stud at the quarterback position, and the coaching is spectacular in this offense. I'm tripling down on the Indianapolis Colts offense. In recent weeks, I already said Anthony Richardson was a buy low guy, and I hope you got him because those days are pretty much over with. He's a must start at this point. But Michael Pittman right now is a buy low guy too because here's the thing about Michael Pittman. Not only did he have a bad week in week four, where he only had one catch on five targets. Like, that's not good. But the other part of Michael Pittman being a buy low guy is that he's had years worth of disappointment on everybody's minds, and that makes him a less attractive guy whenever he has a bad week. People are not going to be willing to stick with him throughout a bad week or two like they would be for a guy like Tyreek Hill. 
you understand what my point is here, right? So the five targets here is still important to remember. Again, it's not like they've just ignored this guy in the offense. Like he had one bad week and it was a five target week still. They didn't ignore him here. He's still Anthony Richardson's first read and they get a big break in the schedule versus Tennessee next week. Tennessee, they just beat down the Bengals, but the thing about the matchup here is that their secondary is not very good at defending the pass. I think that he hits back just as hard in week five coming up here. And I think you get away with sending a guy like George Pickens or Terry McLaurin for Michael Pittman. And that I would take all day long because the upside is highest with Michael Pittman. Our next guy right here on the list right here, it's another guy that I think a lot of people are just a little bit uneasy with and they have been all season. It's Amari Cooper of the Cleveland Browns right now. This one's a little bit different than the first two. Like the first one with Jalen Waddle, you're talking about an excellent player that we're just having a window right now where we could do this. The thing about Amari Cooper is I don't think his fantasy football value has really changed much. I don't think there's much different about Amari Cooper in people's eyes now as opposed to where they were before week one. Like I don't think much has changed about his fantasy football value. I think people have been uneasy about Amari Cooper all year. That's the reality here. And now he's coming off a bad week. This smells like a buy low opportunity to me because you already factor in the fact that people were not already sold on Amari Cooper in the first place. And you couple that with a bad week that he had. That's a buy low opportunity because here's the thing. His volume has been there even in a horrible game. He still had six targets in that game on Sunday versus the Baltimore Ravens. Without Nick Chubb in week three, which by the way is huge for Amari Cooper, he was great in week three. He was absolutely tremendous in week three. He's super important to the offense and him and Deshaun Watson have very good chemistry together. And that is an important piece to note here because the different quarterback, which if you did not know, Deshaun Watson did not start in this week four matchup. It was Dorian Thompson Robinson, who I was probably a little bit overzealous on in my Sunday morning live stream, but that's the big change here that happened. Amari Cooper was not dealing with his quarterback one. So here's the thing about Amari Cooper moving forward. So coming off the bad week and they're on a bye week this week in week five. So the thing about Amari Cooper is if you have an owner in your league who's got Amari Cooper and they're one and three or oh and four, they're maybe even maybe even two and two. They may be desperate to get a win this week. And they don't, and Amari Cooper obviously is not going to give them anything in that effort. So they may be willing to sell off Amari Cooper for someone like George Pickens, Hollywood Brown, or Cortland Sutton. And those are the types of moves I would make. You get a guy like Amari Cooper who's in a better offense than all of those guys. And I think that the upside is there longer term for Amari Cooper. So I would take this kind of shot this week. Our next guy here is Aaron Jones of the Green Bay Packers right now. So Aaron Jones obviously returned on Thursday night, which honestly kind of feels like ancient history to me right now. That's how fast the fantasy football season moves, guys. And it's why it's important to keep up because you have to remember about Aaron Jones. He wasn't used much. And this is this was predictable. Like I've been saying for guys like Aaron Jones, right? He's a guy that already didn't have much tar- many touches in week one. So coming off an injury when he gets back from missing two weeks, there's no way he's going to come out and dominate in volume. And he didn't right there. The workload after many weeks off was always going to be a low, low number. I've been on this one for weeks so. though. Not that Aaron Jones is a trade low target, but look at the other running back there. Obviously, A.J. Dillon, well known in the fantasy football community. The quadzilla, quad god, right? Like, the dude's a beast of a human, but he's not very good in real life football. He's just not. I mean, look at the efficiency. 2.7 yards per carry this year for A.J. Dillon. And that's with opportunities, without Aaron Jones. Like, A.J. Dillon had plenty of opportunities the, the week two and week three. And he didn't capitalize on it because he's just not a very good player, guys. Green Bay can't afford to have Aaron Jones on the sidelines. As long as Aaron Jones is healthy this week and he comes back and he does fine, I think Aaron Jones is going to get another 15 to 20 plus touch game this week. He's got to be more involved. He's an essential piece in this offense. They cannot run the ball with A.J. Dillon, man. I would try to send someone like Alexander Madison right now Miles Sanders right now, Damian Pierce for Aaron Jones, because 
while the volume may never be 20 plus touches for Aaron Jones this year, he's still efficient with the work that he gets and he's the best running back in this backfield. They can't afford to have this guy on the bench for much longer. He will definitely get more touches in week five as opposed to what he did in week four. And that's what makes it such a great buy low trade target right now. Jameer Gibbs, my personal favorite of the week is the next trade target. Here's the thing about Jameer Gibbs. Let's get this out there. I know that David Montgomery is the running back one in Detroit. In fact, if you've been with me since the offseason, you know that I'm not lying. I was big on David Montgomery all the way back to the early portion of the offseason. So my message with Jameer Gibbs has been very, very consistent. I know for a fact also that people are pissed with Jameer Gibbs right now. People are pissed with him. I got several comments after the Thursday night game saying that people were just done with him. Like not even like, um, I'll give him another week or two. No, just done with the guy. And honestly, it's hard to blame people like that. Like if you drafted this guy, you had to have drafted him in like the third round, fourth round of late, latest in most platforms that you were on. Jameer Gibbs was a very early round guy. And like I said, back in the off season, I said, don't draft him. Don't draft him. He is not worth this price. And it has been bad. There's no question about it. Here's the thing about my opinion. My opinion on Jameer Gibbs hasn't changed one bit since the offseason. I've stayed super consistent. And that's exactly why I think that he is a great buy low trade target right now. So I think his fantasy football value is actually decreasing to where it should have been during the start of the season. I don't think it should have been as high as it was in the draft season. I just don't, never did. I think that his value is decreasing now properly to where he should be valued. Because here's the thing, he's the clear running back two in the offense like we discussed. But look at the touches that he's getting per game. So a running back two in most offenses is not like a Detroit Lions running back two. He's averaging 13.3 touches per game. Now to put that in perspective, that's more of an average per game on touches than Raheem Mostert. That's about the same as Kenneth Walker, Brian Robinson, Kyron Williams, and Bijan Robinson. Yeah, Bijan Robinson is averaging about the same amount of touches per game that Jameer Gibbs is. The difference between those guys and Jameer Gibbs is all of them have scored. And that's why they're finishing higher on a weekly basis in fantasy football than Jameer Gibbs. Gibbs has not scored yet but he has been efficient. And that's what I want to see right now. You can see it on the screen, 4.6 yards per carry for this guy. The touchdowns are going to come in this offense. This Detroit Lions offense is just simply too explosive. Like I said earlier, I was not big on drafting Gibbs. I feel really good right now. One, one because I was right about the situation, but also two, because this is literally a prime buy low situation because you could send off a guy like Miles Sanders or Rashad White or even Ramondre Stevenson for Jameer Gibbs right now. And the guy that I would take every single time is the guy in a better offense who has longer term upside throughout the season here. The running back two with high upside is now affordable. That's the reality here. You have to do this one this week though because one of these weeks, he will score and he will not be a buy low trade target anymore. I am super confident on this one, guys. Trade for Jameer Gibbs low, low this week. This is the week to do it. Moving on to our last guy on the list here. We're trading for an injured guy right now. It's Cooper Cup of the Los Angeles Rams right now. This one needs to be under specific circumstances and let me explain here. So Cooper Cup, first off, I've read the reports that he is expected to return in week five. So good sign, definitely a good thing right there. You need to be in good shape to make this trade. You either need to be in three and one position or four and oh, and your team is solid and you've got really no cracks. This is simply an upgrade situation that you're going for here. And the cup owner as well needs to be desperate. They need to be sitting at one and three or 0-4, which by the way is very possible because they likely drafted him in the first round or two. So they're not getting production from one of their top two picks in all likelihood. You're not gonna get Cup unless someone's desperate. That's just the reality with Cooper Cup because if, if they've made it this far with Cooper Cup, they're like, why would I trade him now when I'm about to get upside for him? But if they're desperate and they can see a return, that's when they will trade him away to you. And if they are desperate, Send them value. You got to send them value because that's the only way you'll make it happen. You got to send someone like DK Metcalf though. 
or Calvin Ridley. Because those guys, while they are wide receiver one upside in fantasy football, they're not target hogs like Cooper Cup is. This is a move that you just go for the upside because it could put you over the top here. Those types of guys, DK and Calvin Ridley, I could definitely see a move making for, for Cooper Cup to put you over the top for the rest of the season. So let me know what you think of the buy low trade targets in the comments below and what questions you need answered before week five fantasy football. And we've got the waiver wire video coming up at 1 p.m. Central this afternoon. So make sure to stay tuned and watch that video when it comes out and I'll see y'all over there.